Hey everyone, welcome back to our series on OOP in JavaScript. Hang tight with me, we have almost crossed the finish line here. Stay tuned afterwards to see some thoughts on how you can take these principles and apply them to your work. All right, so if you remember back to the last video on constructor functions and the new keyword. So we have a constructor function here. We have a function called make person. Notice that I am using a capital letter to signify that, okay, this is a constructor function. It is a special type of function which is intended to be used with the new keyword. It takes in one parameter, it's a name, and we are assigning it to this dot name. Now we learned in the last video that this here is a special object which exists when under the hood, the constructor function generates a new object. Now, when ECMA International, which is basically a forum of the designers of the language JavaScript, got together in 2015, they said, okay, how can we take this constructor function pattern and make it a little bit cleaner, a little bit easier to read and a little bit more extensible? Also, how can we take something that other developers are asking for, particularly Java developers? Java developers are used to something called classical inheritance. And so they're used to working with these data structures called classes. And they said, okay, we want those in JavaScript. So the designers of the language said, okay, how can we kind of satisfy both parties here? How can we take this constructor function pattern and make it fit the constraints of what these Java developers are asking for with classes? So out of that, we got JavaScript classes. Now take a look at this example here. Here I have a class called makePerson. Again, I have a capital letter here and it has something on it called a constructor. And then it has a greet method. So when I actually create a new instance of make person down here using the new keyword, what is it gonna do? Well, it's gonna do the exact same thing that we saw the constructor function did. It will generate an object and it will return it out and assign it to this constant Walter. So that when we call walter.greet, it will run this method. It will look to see what is this? This is what's left of the dot here. So this is Walter. So it's gonna look on Walter. It's gonna say, okay, what is Walter's name? It's Walter because we had assigned it in the constructor. Let me break this all down for you visually. I'm gonna take this whole chunk here and let's take a look at what is going on here. So we have this class and inside of it, we have something called a constructor and we have a method called greet. Now, what we learned in the last video is that anytime we have a function in JavaScript, we have both a function, we have both a function and an associated object. And on that object, there is a property called prototype. And that prototype property is also an object. Now, what happens when we actually call a constructor function? It will generate a new object called this. It will do some work to the this object, such as attaching properties on it, and then it will return it out. And it will create a link from that newly generated object back up to prototype. So here's where classes in JavaScript are really interesting. Classes are what we call syntactic sugar. Syntactic sugar really just means um, a nicer, easier, cleaner way of writing something that does the exact same thing as if we had written it in the longhand version. So here we say classes are syntactic sugar over constructor functions. What do I mean by that? Classes are basically just constructor functions with a shiny new wrapper. So here in our class, we have something called the constructor. This is basically like the function portion. And here we have a method and all of the methods that, uh, that exist on the class, the methods are basically like the object portion. So you can kind of think of it, right? So every function in JavaScript is both a function and an object. So constructor functions are both functions and objects. Same thing for classes. Classes are both functions and objects. So here, when we create a new instance of this class make person, it's going to do the exact same thing. We are we are passing in an argument that's a string, Walter, and it takes it in as this parameter name here. It assigns it to the this 
object, which we saw in the last video, which is generated sort of under the hood by the constructor function. It's assigned that property name, and then the constructor function will under the hood also create a link back up to prototype and return the new this object back out. So that the new object which is returned back out is assigned to the constant Walter. And when we run Walter.greet and invoke that method, it will say, hi, my name is Walter. Um, that all might be a little bit confusing. That is totally okay. But something that is important to understand is that classes for the most part are going to be how you're gonna want to write your JavaScript. In general, classes are sort of the accepted way of writing constructor functions at this point. And they are used extensively in JavaScript frameworks like React, Vue, and Angular. So it is super, super important. If you want to be a JavaScript developer, you have to know classes. And as you go along, you'll start to pick up some of, some of the best practices and some of the sort of extra stuff that goes along with that. For now, just familiarize yourself with these patterns here. All right, I will leave it at that. Have a great rest of your day. If you found this helpful, if you found value in this, please feel free to subscribe down below. Leave me a comment, let me know what I missed, and I will see you all next time.